Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay, uh, the subject I want to talk about in this video uh, is the uh, in the follow-up of the subjects we talked about uh, classification and we talked about uh, uh, neural networks. Uh, in the previous session, we talked about perceptron. Perceptron is a, is a neural network that has only one neuron. Uh, we said that perceptron uh, could be used for classification and uh, it could be used for learning when the learning model is a linear uh, model uh, so perceptron it could be used as a classifier and uh, uh, we said that perceptron has some inputs some weights that are multiplied in the inputs and then we had a uh, adder that adds up the inputs and then we have an activation function that uh, forms the output of the perceptron uh, we talked about uh, bias in the perceptron what is bias what is activation function uh, we talked about learning in the perceptron and we said that learning uh, is uh, <coughs> uh, setting the weights in the perceptron uh, we talked about these issues okay uh, the next subjects we want to talk about uh, <coughs> is the uh, the limitations of the perceptron okay the limitations of the perceptron okay perceptron is a very good classifier that could be used for classification but one of the most important uh, limitations of the perceptron is that perceptron as we said in the previous session has a linear learning model perceptron has a linear learning model uh, so it could be used for classification when the data needs a linear learning model okay uh, look at this figure in the left look at this figure here okay uh, you see data uh, 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 some data here some of the data are plus some of them are minus these are the classes okay these are the outputs of the data some of them are plus one the class is plus one some of them are minus one uh, for example the apple and the pear or the family car or an, and the non-family car okay we have two classes here we have two inputs x1 x2 these are the inputs okay so this is our data and uh, these are the inputs x1 x2 okay now if if we want to do a classification on this data it means that we want to distinguish or we want to separate this data using a learning model okay if we use a linear learning model if we use a linear learning model it would be something like this okay we have a line here okay you see this this is a line a line this line could be used to separate the data from the plus one class and the minus one class okay so this line could be used 
for separating data. This line could be used for uh, separating data. Okay. Uh, but when the data could not be separated using a line, when the data could not be separated using the line, what happens? Okay, look at this example in the right. Okay. Uh, you see here again we have two classes plus one and minus one and uh, if if we want to separate the plus one class from the minus one class okay uh, we can't have a line to do this okay we can't find a line for separating the data in the two classes Okay. You can't find any line to separate the data in the two classes. Okay. How could we separate these two classes from each other? Okay. You okay, we need something like this. Okay. Look at this. You see that? If we have this a learning model if if we have this uh, a learning model we could separate the data from the plus one class and the minus one class as you see this is not a line this is a nonlinear this is non sorry this is uh, let me write something here. Okay, this is nonlinear. This is a nonlinear model. It's not a line. This is called a nonlinear model, learning model, okay? So it's not a line. So in this data, we can't use a line for separating the data from the plus one class and the minus one class. Okay, so this is a limitation of the perceptron. We said that perceptron is a learning model, it is a linear learning model. But a linear learning model has this limitation that it can't be used for data that is separated without a line. Okay. This limitation, this limitation uh, pushes pushes us to the multi-layer perceptron. As we said in the previous session, uh, the neural network it is composed it is composed of multiple uh, computation units. Each of these computation units are called uh, neurons. Each of the neurons they have some inputs and output, and the and the neurons are connected to each other. Uh, the perceptron you see, uh, you saw a perceptron was a single neuron, but in the multi-layer perceptron we have multiple neurons. Okay, we have multiple neurons. This is a very important 
uh, issue about the multilayer perceptron. So in the multilayer perceptron, we have multiple neurons. These neurons are uh, ordered uh, in a, uh, in some layers. Okay. Okay. We have uh, we have two layers here. The the hidden layer and the output layer. Okay, you see that in the hidden layer we have two neurons and in the output layer we have three neurons. Okay, as I said we have several layers in the multiple in the multi-layer perception in each layer there are some computation units or neurons each of these neurons has some inputs and outputs okay one issue about the multi-layer percep perception is uh, how many neurons should we use in each layer Okay. Uh, as you see, we have two layers, hidden and output. The number of neurons in the hidden layer uh, doesn't have any rule. We don't have any rule to decide about the number of neurons in the hidden layer. Okay. It uh, setting the number of neurons in the hidden layer is usually a trial and error for process trial and error process okay so in the hidden layer we don't have any rule for the number of neurons or computation units but in the output layer we have a rule the number of a neurons in the output layer is equal to the number of classes in data. Okay, so this is uh, a concept about the multilayer perceptron that how many neurons do we need in each layer? In the hidden layer, we don't know, but in the output layer, the number of neurons is equal to, to the number of classes. Okay. One other issue about uh, the multilayer perceptron is uh, fully connected. Fully connected means that uh, the output of each neuron is connected to the input of all other neurons in the next layer. Okay, so fully connected means that the output of each neuron is selected to the input of all the neurons. Okay, so this is fully connected. Uh, most uh, most of the neural networks that we have, they are fully connected. And again, weights, as you s as you saw in the perceptron, in the multilayer perceptron, we have some weights too. Okay, uh, so this this is some. Um, This is some general concepts about uh, the multilayer perceptron. Okay, in the multilayer perceptron, we have several layers. In each layer, the number of neurons uh, in the hidden layer is uh, not precise. Uh, we s uh, select it by some uh, trial and error. 
and uh, in the output layer the number of neurons is equal to the number of classes in data fully connected is another concept and weights uh, weights are uh, the parameters of the learning model in the uh, uh, multi-layer perceptron Okay, as we said, uh, there is an activation function There is an activation function in each uh, neuron uh, In the multilayer perceptron, uh, uh, we usually use the uh, sigmoid function as the activation function Okay, Sigmoid function is a useful uh, function uh, that is used in the output layer of the multi-layer perceptron okay so the activation function is usually sigmoid Okay, a learning. The first point is that uh, in the multi layer perceptron, the learning model is a non linear model. In the perceptron, we said that the learning model is linear, but in the multi layer perceptron, it is non linear. Okay, so the multilayer perceptron has a nonlinear learning model, and uh, the algorithm, the algorithm that is used for uh, uh, for learning and setting the weights is called error backpropagation. Error backpropagation is an algorithm used for a learning in the neural network. The main idea of this algorithm is that the error in each neuron is sent to uh, uh, is sent from the output layer to the neurons in the previous layers. Okay, so error back propagation is uh, is an important uh, concept, uh, which is the learning algorithm of uh, of uh, the multilayer perceptron. As I said in the error back propagation, the error is computed in the output layer and then it is uh, it uh, goes back uh, into the network and updates the weights. Okay, so in the multilayer perceptron, the learning is a bit. Uh, complicated and uh, we have an algorithm called error back propagation okay here I want to talk about the learning algorithm in the multilayer perceptron the learning algorithm uh, first, we define a neural network with some neurons in the hidden layer and the output layer. The 
then we uh, initialize the weights with some random values okay so we define the network and we initialize the weights of the network then we enter this loop uh, repeat until okay enter data into neural network and get output of all neurons okay so we give an input to the uh, <coughs> uh, to the neural network and we get the output of all of the neurons Okay, when we have calculated the error of all the neurons, then we calculate we calculate the error uh, the error of the output neurons. We calculate the error of the output neurons. Okay, as we said, when a data enters the neural network, on the other side we have some. Uh, outputs uh, and uh, uh, using that output and uh, the target output that we have in the data we could calculate the error when we have calculated the error uh, this error could be used for learning in the multi-layer perceptron Okay, in this slide, uh, uh, you see some formulas that could could be used for uh, calculating the, the error in the output neurons. Okay, if we have this delta k, delta k is equal to o o k o k. Uh, multiplied by y minus ok uh, uh, multiplied by tk minus ok ok so this is the error of the neurons in the output layer ok then we want to calculate the errors of the hidden neurons why do we calculate error? The reason is that we want to use that error for updating the weights. If we have this error, then we give it uh, any input and get the error to uh, calculate uh, the output of each neuron. Okay, in as I said, in the hidden layer, the situation is the same. Uh, we have to calculate the error, and then uh, and uh, uh, then use that error for uh, learning. Uh, for the for the hidden layers, the formula is like this: delta H is equal to O H uh, uh, multiplied by one minus O H uh, multiplied by sigma W K H W uh, delta K. Okay, as you see here, I have written that uh, this is error back propagation. Why have I written this? Why have I written this? Okay, uh, if you go back and look at the formula we have here, okay, this delta k is the error in the neuron uh, number k in the output layer. Okay, you know that we have some uh, data. In the data, uh, we have some inputs and outputs. 
okay here uh, in this delta k uh, t tk is uh, uh, is the target output for the data okay is the computed output predicted output okay when we uh, so so delta k is the uh, output of a neuron number k in the output layer okay in this formula you see that delta h when we want to calculate delta h here we need this if we don't have if we uh, if we don't have this delta k we can't update the weights in the hidden layer okay so we have used the error of the output neurons to update the weights in the hidden layer okay so uh, we have a delta k error of neuron k in the output layer and delta h the error of neuron h in the output layer okay then we have this uh, have uh, uh, these equations for updating the weights WJI is equal to WJI plus delta WJI and delta WJI is equal to eta uh, multiplied by delta J uh, multiplied by XJI okay so this is the algorithm which is used in the multiple layer perceptron for updating the uh, uh, weights okay so as we said the, the neural network is a very important classifier and uh, we see that uh, the neural network with only one neuron it could be used for classification with data that has a linear model but if if we want more capable models uh, uh, you could use the multiple layer perceptron which has a nonlinear model and uh, many uh, advantages over the perceptron okay one issue that we have that we have talked about it in previous slide is overtraining or overfitting Okay, as we said, if the learning model is uh, a bit complex, then this learning model, when we use it for training, it would learn uh, the noise data too. Okay, so overtraining is that when we have a complex learning model uh, and uh, this model could learn the noise data too then what happens is that in in the training process we have a low error and in the uh, test process we have a higher error for, uh, for example in the training process the error is 65 
and in the test process uh, the error is 85% for example okay uh, what how can we prevent how can we prevent overtraining uh, one of the methods that we could prevent overtraining is the use of validation data okay I will talk about this issue in this figure you see that in this figure uh, in the horizontal axis it is the number of weight updates it means the number of learnings or weight updates that is done and uh, in uh, the vertical uh, axis we have uh, the error in the vertical axis we have the error so you see that uh, these uh, these two lines okay these two lines this one is the training error and this one is the validation error okay what is the validation I talked about uh, the data in the previous slide I said the, the data it has some inputs and output and we divide the data into training data test data another uh, type of data is the validation data it means that we could divide the data into three parts randomly training testing and validation okay in this figure we only are focusing on training and validation okay this uh, this line the, uh, the upper line is the validation error and the, this line is the training error as you see in this figure when the number of weight updates is going higher it means when the learning is being done for too much time the training error is coming low okay so the training error usually is going lower and lower when we have more uh, learning okay uh, but uh, in the validation data it is a data that is only used to help us in training okay the validation data when we are uh, evaluating the model on the validation data we see that this validation data is going down 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 and at this point it is going up okay so what happened here we said that if we have many many a learning if we have much learning uh, the training error uh, would go down at and we will it would become uh, lower but the validation error uh, it would it would come lower and from a point it would it would go high so how could we use the validation data to prevent overtraining okay we could check the error of the validation data if we see that the error in the validation data it is going higher it means that we have to stop the learning okay we have to stop the learning and uh, uh, do the learning um, until uh, the validation error is going low when it goes high we should stop the learning okay this was a multi-layer perceptron and it is a neural network with multiple computation units uh, and uh, it has uh, more capabilities compared to 
perceptron. I will talk about the rest of these subjects in the next videos and classes. Thank you very much.